Tanzania hosted what appears to be the largest ever Chinese military deployment to sub-Saharan Africa for Exercise Peace Unity 2024. The joint exercise, which also included Mozambique, focused on counter-terrorism operations. David DeRoche, an associate professor at the U.S. National Defense University, discussed the Chinese military advance in Africa with VOA senior analyst Mohammed El Shinawi. China has long had a military presence in Africa, but it's usually been in the forms of weapons and occasionally advisors. They also have a number of security guards that are probably military forces under another name. And of course, they have huge commercial interests and build a lot of infrastructure in places like Tanzania. So it's to be expected that they'll do this. Of course, there's also uh, the background of this where they're trying to expand their presence in the Indian Ocean, which China is absolutely dependent on on for their imports of energy and raw materials. So I think this is something to be expected. I don't think that it's something that people will welcome necessarily in the West, but I don't think anybody is surprised by it. Senior Colonel Zhang Gang, spokesperson for the Chinese military national defense, said the size was carried out on land and at sea and aims to enhance the participating troops' capabilities in joint counterterrorism operations and deepen military mutual trust and practical cooperation. Does that mean China is replacing the U.S. and France in their counterterrorism efforts in Africa? A good question. So the U.S. and France have never been particularly, we've never really been partners of either of these countries. They uh, uh, emerged uh, into independence as uh, partners with China and with the Soviet Union to a lesser extent. Mozambique, for example, tried to use the Wagner Group, the Russian mercenary, to deal with an ISIS threat in Cabo Delgado in 2019 and the Wagner forces were defeated. So it's more of a continuation of a very long, patient, and multi-spectrum commercial, cultural, weapon sales, and training presence that we're seeing there. And I think it's something that will be of concern to the U.S., but not of driving concern. Permanent basing would be a a bigger issue. Sea drills included port defense, counterterrorism tactics, search and seizure, anti-piracy and joint maritime patrols. Commander of the Tanzanian Navy, Amir Ramadan Hassan, said, We anticipate that these exercises will strengthen our military capabilities and foster closer ties with the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Your take on the expanded cooperation with China. In the naval realm, what you had was big Chinese ship cruisers, a landing dock ship, engaging in things like exercises at sea. And the Tanzanian contribution was patrol boats. So um, it, there is a, a sort of asymmetry there. What Tanzania needs and what I think every country, every seafaring country, to include the United States and China, would welcome is Tanzania having the ability to defend its ports and defend its sea lanes. That's that's something that they do with, with their patrol vessels. The Chinese presence, on the other hand, was a conventional warfare capability that's of limited utility towards Tanzanian defense requirements, but probably you know made for um, an interesting uh, event. And of course, it allowed China to project naval power far away from its uh, traditional basis. So that, I think the benefits accrued asymmetrically, overwhelmingly towards China and the uh, benefits towards Tanzania were probably marginal. So the United States shouldn't be worried about this Chinese push militarily in Africa? We should always be concerned about it, but the Chinese have been in Africa for a long time, and and other people have been there as well. The North Koreans trained a unit of the Zimbabwean army that decades ago carried out a genocidal campaign in Matabili land. It's not so much that Africa is a theater of competition between the United States and the Soviet Union as it was then and you know, China. It's more that the West has a very, very limited footprint in Africa and very limited attention span for Africa. We haven't really put the level of investment of time, personnel, and money into sub-Saharan Africa that China has. And so China is getting some benefits, some security benefits or prestige benefits from their decades-long investment. And I think it's something that we've always had a problem with. 
The Chief of Defense Forces, CDF General Mohosike Nerugaba, has demanded the United States in compensation for losses incurred by Uganda in the U.S. war on terror in Somalia. U.S. dollar 100 billion is the minimum I demand from the USA, and they will pay every penny, said General Mohosi in a series of posts on X platform. The USA owes at least U.S. dollar 100 billion for our work in Somalia. He said, adding, we did a lot better than the people in Ukraine. It seems their specialty is running from Russians. We are waiting for payment. Mohamed El Amine Soif, the special representative of the chairperson of the African Union Commission for Somalia, recently told Voya Somali that the mission had documented a around 4,000 casualties, with troops from Burundi and Uganda suffering the most casualties. Uganda was the first East African country to deploy troops under AMISOM into Somalia in March 20, 2007. Uganda would later make up the bulk of the African Union force, helping Somalia's UN-backed government. The U.S., which had pulled its forces from Somalia following the Black Hawk Down incident in 1993, in which 18 Americans were killed, relied on Ugandan forces to achieve Washington's goals in Mogadishu. Hundreds of Ugandan soldiers were killed in bloody battles aimed hosting Al-Qaeda-backed Al-Shabaab militants in Somalia's capital. In 2012, UPDF's Major Duncan Kashoma, who was injured in Mogadishu, told BBC that Ugandan soldiers were used to operating under the cover of the jungle in pursuit of the rebel Rhodes Resistance Army in the north. But they were not fully prepared for the exposed fighting in Somalia's desert terrain and Mogadishu's shattered city space scape. Al-Shabaab also were a difficult enemy because they were often mingled with civilians and because they had become expert in the use of non-conventional weapons such as improvised explosive devices or IEDs. Mohose's tweets come at a time of frosty relations between Uganda and the United States. The U.S. recently slapped sanctions on Ugandan officials over the enactment of the anti-homosexuality law and discouraged their business from investing in Uganda. Washington also scrapped Uganda from the beneficiaries of Africa Growth Opportunity Act, AGOA, which provided eligible sub-Saharan African countries with duty-free access to the U.S. market for over 1,800 products. The USA must apologize to Uganda for removing U.S. from Agoa, said Mohosi. He emphasized, we must immediately be reinstated. Then we will talk about compensation for all soldiers we lost in Somalia on their orders. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.